Hello and welcome to the tutorial for the Scorebook Plus Basketball Scoring Application. In this tutorial we're going to cover the advanced scoring features. Uh, let's go ahead and do that now. Uh, we'll launch, uh, go to advanced scoring. Uh, you'll note for setup you've got to select the home team. We'll go ahead and these are teams we've previously created. Select the Dragons as the home team. Uh, for the weight team we'll select the Vikings. Um, the rules by default are set to High School USA. You have several different built-in rules to choose from. All the built-in rules are read-only, as you can see here for High School USA. Uh, but if you wanted to create your own rules, and we have done that down here with Test League rules, let's go and view Edit, you can see that you're allowed to modify that. So, for example, we could change to Halves, uh, make it 10-minute periods, um, etc. Again, we can modify everything here. Let's go back. We won't save the changes. Um, we'll leave it at High School USA. You also have the option to enter uh, officials, location, and season. We'll leave those empty for now. For match type, it defaults to none. But again, there's a preset um, list here that you can choose from or you can create your own. Let's go back, start the game. For preferences, anytime uh, you start a game, you're presented with this screen to change the preferences. Anytime you change them, they're remembered for the next game. Uh, right here, we um, have a preference after you score a point, uh, whether you're prompted for the player number, um, after you enter a file, whether you're prompted for the player number, uh, tracking missed shots. Uh, play horn at the end of the period, we leave that off. If you're not the official score pe uh, keeper, you should leave that off. Um, might throw people off to hear a buzzing sound at the end of the game if you're just a spectator. Uh, and then enable clock controls, we'll leave those on. <clears throat> Hit continue. Um, the tip off, we select that the Dragons won the tip off. You'll note in the middle that we've got a log of everything that's taking place in the game. Let's walk through all the different components of this uh, screen. On the top right hand uh, corner, uh, you'll see the information for the weight team, including their points, uh, timeouts left, full and partial timeouts. Um, and uh, on the top left, uh, you'll see the score and timeouts uh, for the home team, uh, full and partial timeouts. On the top right hand side in blue, you see Q1, which is the current period. Since we selected rules that use the quarter scoring period, it says quarter. If we had selected at home, uh, I'm sorry, if we had selected a different rule that used halves, then that would say H1 or H2. Uh, for overtime, that'll say OT1 or OT2. Uh, let's look at the menu on the top left-hand side. You can see the we have the option to stop the game uh, at the end of the game. Adjust the game clock at any time. We could add time, remove time, or just reset the time. Uh, we also have the ability to change the period. So when the period ends going from the first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, uh, game stats, uh, which we'll cover in a little bit, and then preferences and help. Let's go ahead and close that. Um, let's go over some of the other controls. You'll note that we can track possession change in the bottom right-hand corner. So every time we tap that, you'll see that the arrow changes on top to indicate a possession change. And in the middle, the log information records that event. Um, anytime we start and stop the clock, you can see the clock is stopped right now. Again, that's recorded in the log in the middle. Um, timeouts, um, let's go ahead and start the clock. Um, you'll note that um, the teams have um, each have three full timeouts and two partial timeouts. So let's take a timeout, and this time we'll uh, the, have the away team take a full timeout. Um, that's recorded <clears throat> at the bottom. The clock is stopped, and uh, on the top right-hand side, it'll show that the team has two full timeouts instead of three. Uh, let's say that was a mistake. Anytime we want to uh, correct the mistake we've made in the game, we could just tap, um, for example, here we could go ahead and uh, delete that timeout um, because it wasn't meant to be taken by the um, away team. So we delete that, say yes. And then what we'll do <clears throat> is the timeout, we correct that and the timeout was actually taken by the home team. And again, you can see that was fixed. Um, let's do a little bit of scoring here. And so when we tap, for example, away two points, um, we forgot to turn the clock on. It reminds us. We say yes, the clock has started. Uh, that's a score. We assign that to player 13. And then we save uh, another two-point score. This time it was player number 14. We save that. Um, now we have the home team. They scored three points. Uh, save that, and then we have a three point, they missed that, so we tap on miss, and the player who missed that shot um, <clears throat> will uh, notice that 
uh, if we go back and we see at the 559 mark that um, we scored a three point that we forgot to credit a player so we'll just tap on that and then we credit that player there um, now let's record a three point for the away team that's a score um, credit it to player number five and save um, later on we find out that the game official has told us that was not a three point shot it was just a two point shot uh, we could tap on that correct it, make it a two-point shot, and uh, everything updates in the game. Uh, we record a two-point score for the uh, home team, credit that to Swanson, save that. <clears throat> this score, the uh, game official tells us that the score was called off because um, the, uh, the player had uh, traveled with the ball, so we have to delete that score. We get swipe on that to delete it, and then hit yes. Uh, another way to delete um, a game event is to select that event. And you note in the top left-hand side, we have a delete button. Um, we're not going to delete that right now. Go ahead and save. Um, <clears throat> so now, uh, let's say that the period has ended. We want to adjust it to the next period. Uh, what will generally happen, let's adjust that clock. Um, and then we'll set it down to... Um, Let's go down to, let's see, make that um, three seconds and let that run down. So the clock is stopped and we start it <clears throat> and we're scoring and the clock stops because it's the end of the period. Uh, you note down here at the bottom that it says clock is stopped and it's quarter one on the top right. So we go, we need to adjust to the next period. <clears throat> so we say change period. Um, we could advance the period, which switches it from quarter one to quarter two, um, or we could do advanced period and start the clock. Let's do that. Advanced period, start clock, and let's do a couple more. Score, player 13, uh, three-point score, uh, foul, <clears throat> and save that. Another foul, save. Um, okay, so let's, uh, let's track our fouls here. So, for example, each team has one foul. And so um, let's do player number five has caused a foul. Uh, player five again, he seems to be fouling a lot in this period. Uh, so we record all of those. Um, <clears throat> and you'll note that, and let's do another foul for player five, um, is that one more for player five. And down here you'll see that player five is marked in red because he's fouled out of the game. Uh, the rules state that <clears throat> the rules we've selected state that once a player's committed five fouls, they've fouled out of the game. So um, you'll also note on the top right hand side for the team fouls are listed at seven. Um, <clears throat> and this um, this leads the team to be in bonus one territory um, because they reached seven team fouls. So um, let's go ahead and just say the period ended and we want to advance that. Change period, advance uh, period and start the clock. You notice that the fouls reset because again for the rules we're using, say that for the U.S. Um, high school rules, that the fouls always reset at half. Um, the individual fouls don't, but the team fouls do. <clears throat> you also note that for each period we have a header here that gives us the breakdown uh, of the score for each team. So the first quarter the score was three to six, um, and then the second quarter um, it was three points scored to two in that quarter, and right now we're in the third quarter. So let's just kind of um, add a couple of more things. Score. If later on if we made a score, like right here we recorded two points for player 88, we found out that um, we thought they made it and that was a miss. We select that and we just switch it to uh, from shot made to shot missed. So go ahead and save that. Advance, change the period again. Start the clock. <clears throat> now we're in the fourth period. Uh, Mid-game, what we can do is go to the menu in the top left bring up the stats and this gives us a breakdown as you can see all the players that have scored the team stats are at the very top so the dry uh, the dragons are two for four shooting 50 percent from the field and they've scored six points uh, we switch over to the vikings they're shooting a hundred percent so they're five for five with ten points you'll also see that player number five here who falled out is uh is tagged um with the red on here so Go ahead and close that. If during the game you want to filter out certain events to look at them, for example, the filters that we have on the top, we could filter to say, show me all of the scores for the home team, and it breaks them down here. Uh, let's say all the fouls for the home team. We only have one foul. Um, <clears throat> let's look at the fouls for the away team, and you see they have more fouls. 
Um, let's clear these filters on top by selecting all teams and uh, all events. Um, and that's it. Um, so let's say this is the end of the game. Uh, we'll just go ahead and uh, stop the clock right now, assume it was the end of the game. So what we do is go to the top left, stop the game. We say game completed. <clears throat> And here we are back at the main screen. At the end of the game, we could look at our saved games. So we go to saved games, uh, scroll to the bottom. <clears throat> Here's the game that we just saved. Uh, you can see the information is uh, stored by period. So all the points uh, scored per period. If we went into overtime, those would be displayed. If you want to look at more of the game details, tap on the game details green button. And here's all the game stats for the players. So there's the Vikings again, and here's the Dragons. Close that out. If you want to share that via email and text or Facebook or Twitter, tap on the share button. That gives you summary information, which basically means the uh, final score, the teams that played, the date that played, and location. Um, so again, uh, you could select any of those to share. If you want to share more detailed information, click on the export button on the lower left-hand corner. You could share it via Max Preps if your team um, has uh, information that they keep up there. Let's select map max preps um, and you're prompted to select out the home or the way team. Uh, this will generate a file with all the information that you want and attach it to an email so that you could email uh, to yourself or the game scorekeeper for import. Uh, let's cancel that. Um, if you export, another option is to export via spreadsheet and again that's via email so you need to have email set up for that. Um, again, um, so that's, uh, that's it. Let's go back here and go back to the new game. And that's it. I hope you've enjoyed uh, this tutorial and uh, look forward to um, seeing more tutorials up here. Um, when you download the game, if you have any questions, uh, want to provide feedback, you can go up to the menu and we have a feedback uh, option there. So please contact us if you have any other questions. Okay, great. All right. Hope you download the game and enjoy using it.